Okay, now we're going to work a multi-stage dividend growth problem. And so let's look, and look at the situation we've got. We have a company that has just paid a dividend of 5 bucks. Now, just to make it perfectly clear, this is $5 that has already been paid out. You don't get it now. <laughs> it's already been paid out. And so we're, when we talk about present values of future dividends, this $5 is not going to be discounted. It's not going to be included in the value because it's already been paid out. That's water under the bridge. So what we have is a $5 dividend. It was just paid. And so next year we're expecting a dividend that's going to be 40% higher than that. And then the year after that, we're expecting that to be 40% higher then 20% higher in the third year. So that gives us a 40, 40, 20% growth rate. And then thereafter, we have a 4% growth rate. Now, in order to do a present value of a bunch of dividends, we need, of course, the dividends. And then we also need the uh, required return on the stock. In this case, we're going to use the capital asset pricing model. We've got a beta. We've got a risk-free rate. And we've got an expected return or required return on the market for next year. So that's enough information to give us a required return on the stock. And so we're going to use the multi-stage dividend growth model. Uh, also, it's called the Gordon growth model. It also might just be called the dividend growth model to find the price today of this, of this stock. And we're going to find out the price of the stock is worth about 96 bucks. So a $5 dividend growing sufficiently fast gives you a stock worth and you know 96 bucks all right so let's go ahead and, and look at how uh, look at how we do this problem first however what I want to do is remind you of the constant growth formula for dividends now we have to use this at the end and so this is this is really not the way this particular problem is set up at least from the beginning but let me remind you because last semester at least a lot of my students didn't remember this from their principals course if you have a stock that has a bunch of dividends, so here's a dividend. This one's already under the bridge. This has already been paid out, but you're expecting to get dividend one, dividend two, dividend three, up to dividend end, and then infinitely many more dividends. These are all dividends every year. Then the price of the stock using this dividend growth model is the present value of all of the dividends. The price would be the present value of the first dividend, that's D1 over discounted back one period at, at R, where that's the discount rate, the cost of capital for the stock. D2 over 1 plus R squared, et cetera, et cetera, and severing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and you add all those up. Now, it turns out that adding all of these up is a little bit complicated, and so instead, we make a simplifying assumption. The simplifying assumption we make is that these dividends from D0 to D1 to D2 are going to grow at a constant growth rate. So if G happens to be that constant growth rate, it'll start off at, at D0, and then it'll grow 1 plus G. And then once it gets to be D1, D1 then it's going to grow at 1 plus G again. And when you write them all down, the, the nth dividend will be D0 times 1 plus G to the n. So this is a simpler way of modeling it. Of course, not all firms grow this way, but if it's growing at a constant growth rate, then it is fairly straightforward to show that the present value of all of those constantly growing dividends, P0, so the price now of a constantly growing stream of dividends, is the next year's dividend, D1, divided by R minus G, where R is the cost of capital, the cost of capital for the stock, so required return on the stock, and G is the constant growth rate for, that, uh, for those dividends. So P0 is D1 over R minus G. Now, our problem doesn't look exactly like that because we've got extra pieces to it, but I wanted to remind you about the constant growth formula first because we'll need it. Now, our particular problem looks a little bit different. We've just had a $5 a share dividend, and so notice how I've indicated that now is right after that $5 a share dividend, so it's, com it's, it's completely unambiguous here. We do not get this $5 a share dividend. Now is right after that. Now, a year from now, the expected dividend is the $5 times 1.4 because it's growing at 40%. That's 7 bucks a share. Two years from now, that expected dividend is the $7 growing at 40% again, which is $9.80 a share. Three years from now, it's going to only grow at 20%, so it'll be the 9.8 times 1.2. That gives you 11.76. And four years from now, 
it's going to grow at 4%. So between year three and four, it's going to grow at 4%. That'll be the 1176 times 1 1.04, which is 12.2304. And notice, I've carried quite a few decimal places here. And we're going to use this number for a, for a um, that P0 is D1 over R minus G formula. And it, it's important that you have a good number of decimal places when you plug it into this, uh, that, that, terminal value that P0 is D1 over R minus G formula. So let's look and see what our problem looks like. We've got a dividend of 7, of 980, of 1176, of 1223, and then a whole bunch of other ones after this that we haven't really written down, but they're there implicitly. And the price today of the stock is the present value of this 7, 980, 1176, 1223, and all the other ones that are coming on. Well, in order to figure out what all of these present values are, we really need to simplify the problem a little bit since it's growing at 4% here and here and here and all of the years after year four, then actually as of year star, okay, so as of this star here, what we have is really a constant growth situation. We have a constant growth situation where the price at year three, where this little arrow is, ought to be D4, so P3, is D4, and here's D4 right here, the 1223.04, over R minus G, where D4 is the 1223.04, G is the 4% growth rate, and R is, well, we need to use the capital asset pricing model to do the calculation. R is the risk-free rate plus beta times the expected return on the market minus the risk-free rate. That would be the 6% plus 1.25 times 13% minus 6, that works out to 14.75%. So, this problem, this big problem where we have a whole bunch of different cash flows, this big problem simplifies a little bit to give you one in which instead of having infinitely many cash flows, we have, and let me look at the next page, we have a situation where we've got the 7, and the 980 and the 1176, and then we have the present value of all of those other dividends, which is P3 is D4 over R minus G, 122304, divided by 14.75% minus 4%, so that would be 113,771. So let's look at this. The present value of this 1176 and all of the dividends thereafter so the present value, all of the ones from here all the way out forever, as of where this star is, is 113,771. So now we have a real simple little picture. We've got $7, 980, and then a total of 125.53 in year three. The 125.53 comes from the dividend that you get plus the present value of the dividend in year four and all of the dividends after year four as well. The present value of that is seven, nine eighty, or seven divided by 1 1.1475. That's 1475 discounted once. 980 divided by 1 1.1475 squared. That's the 980 discounted twice. And then the 125.53 discounted three times. That gives you the 96.62. Now that is the simple way to do the calculation. We can also do the calculation on the BA2 plus using the cash flow registers. So let's go ahead and use the cash flow registers then now for the BA2 plus. And it'd be nice to be able to see all of these cash flows. I'm going to have to move the BA2 plus around I guess to be able to see them all at the same time. So Let's go ahead and figure out how to use the cash flow registers. First thing we want to do is we want to click on CF. This CF stands for cash flow. And the first thing you look for is the first initial cash flow. That would be the cash flow at time zero. And notice in our timeline, we don't have a cash flow at time zero. So we don't have to worry about anything there. We want to leave that at zero. And notice it says enter. That's how you enter a, um, enter a number. So hit enter for cash flow zero and leave it at zero because we don't have an initial one. Now we click the down arrow and we want to enter cash flow one. All right, now cash flow one is the $7. So seven, enter. 
And now we want to hit the down arrow. And the question is, is how many of those do we get? Well, in our case, we only get one of those $7. It's it set up so that you can simplify some calculations. We only get one of them, and the frequency by default is 1. That's the correct number, so let's hit Enter. Now let's hit the down arrow, and this will give us a place to enter the second cash flow, which is $9.80. Enter. Down arrow, and this will tell us where the frequency is for that. That's 1. And actually, this little arrow thing means that it's already entered, but I'm, I'm just a little anal about it. We're going to hit one, uh, hit the Enter button anyway, just to make sure it's entered. And now let's see what's our third number. So we'll go down one more time. Cash flow three is 125.53, 125.53, and we would like to enter that. Hit the down button and notice the frequency is 1, but let's go ahead and hit enter anyway. And now what we want to do is we want to compute the present value. Or actually compute the NPV. So if we hit the NPV button, it's going to ask us what the discount rate is. And if you notice, we've got the discount rate is 14.75%. And remember, don't enter 0.1475. You have to enter 14.75. And I know that seems kind of dumb, but that's the way all of the financial calculators are. So we hit I is 14.75, enter. And then we hit the down button. And we hit, notice it says compute here. It's going to tell us what the NPV is, but not until we compute it. So let's go ahead and compute it now. And it tells us that the present value of all of those cash flows was 96.62, which is, of course, the same number that we got calculating it by hand. This is marginally easier if you have a number of cash flows to do. This little formula here down on the, on the screen is, is pretty cumbersome if you have to do more than maybe three numbers or four numbers. This is actually cumbersome if you have to do more than three or four numbers either, but um, it's, it's marginally easier, I think, than doing it by hand. In any case, that's what the present value uh, of all of those dividends is, and so that's how much the stock would be worth today, which is 96.62.